I'm Scott Isle Miller. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today I got a question on the forum on, on here on YouTube about could you live comfortably in Nicaragua for $1,000 US per month? <laughs> that sounds like a great question. And then he followed up with, for example, in San Juan del Sur. Whoa, let's hold your horses, let's get to that. Right up to the bump. We've done a number of episodes breaking down what budgets might be for living comfortably for a family, for individuals at different lifestyle points and in different parts of the country. And we've done some videos where we've shown living around about $1,000 US per month in Nicaragua is not only viable, that you can generally live relatively comfortably. Of course, you're going to be on a tight budget that goes without saying, I hope, because if you're going to purchase anything that you may want, especially from abroad, you're going to be paying the same prices as anyone else, and the total amount of money you have to work with is relatively lean, but that doesn't mean that you can't live well. You can certainly afford rent, which could be for an entire house as low as about $150 per month. You could eat out limited places and do a lot of street food when you do eat out or cook for yourself and you have some flexibility and you can definitely live pretty comfortably for around about a thousand dollars a month of course you're going to make some compromises but you're still going to be able to have those beers you're going to be able to go out and see live music you're going to be able to do things and take transportation but we also have done a number of videos talking about how San Juan del Sur isn't what we consider Nicaragua. It is a world apart. It really is. It is a different place. It's an enclave. It's a tourist center. And it is far and away the most expensive part of Nicaragua. There's nothing anywhere in the country that really compares to it. Of course, there's little tiny developments in Managua that can be super expensive. But we're talking about a single building or a single gated community at most, not an entire city. So let's talk about San Juan del Sur on $1,000 a month because this is going to get really tough. Now, of course, if you're local and you live in San Juan del Sur and you're bringing in $1,000 a month, you can live there. And you might even argue that you can live there comfortably. But really importantly, more or less, everyone who is doing that is commuting in from outside of San Juan del Sur proper, mostly from away from the beach and coming in from other areas so that they can live a lot more cheaply and just spend their days in San Juan del Sur. And it's probably not what people mean when they say they want to live in San Juan del Sur, right? When you're talking about being in a beach town, they mean they actually want to be in the beach town. Maybe not on the beach because you can't do that in San Juan mostly, but you can be within walking distance of it quite easily. But to do so at a thousand dollar budget is going to be very tough. Most of the rents that are there in town are above two hundred dollars and generally pushing towards three hundred. It's been a little while since I actually priced out some low cost uh, housing there, but when we were looking a number of years ago, but within the current envelope of pricing, what we were able to found, find is some decent housing at about two hundred and sixty to two hundred and eighty dollars per month. This has probably gone up, but only slightly, maybe three hundred dollars a month now but let's even work with the smaller number let's say if we really hunted around spend some time we could get down to 250. what we found was not the modern uh expat housing that people picture when they talk about san juan del sur and i'm assuming that the person asking this question isn't requiring that they have the latest most modern place because they're on that sub thousand dollar budget but it is important to note that when we did find a place for someone to rent it was in the old town part of san juan del sur not the part that's on the beach but when you drive down the main road there's another village just outside the town. You would still totally consider the San Juan del Sur. You can still walk to the beach, but the walk's like 20, 30 minutes, not five minutes. You're quite a bit farther away and you're not with expats. You are with uh, the, the local Nicaraguans who are in the more expensive housing really close to the beach. Those few, because it's a very small area where you really want to be close. You probably work in town. You're probably an investor in town. And so you have a place quite close to the beach. But you're looking as a starting point at at least $100 more than you would be looking in the rest of the country. That same house would only be $145, $150 here in Leon, for example, to be in the San Juan del Sur zone, not even in the in the downtown area, 250, maybe 300. So that doubling potential, at least $100 more of that price is significant when your total budget's 1000. If your total budget's 10,000 a month, you wouldn't even notice. All right, so it'd be no problem at all. And San Juan del Sur for a housing, you, you know, you could do some really nice stuff at still really reasonable prices. And for those who are coming from the United States, I'm sure you're saying, wow, 300 a month for did you say a house? Yeah, it's not bad at all. San Juan del Sur is approachable. But when we're talking $1,000 budgets, we're talking about truly pushing the bounds of what we can do. And remember, this isn't can I survive? He wants to know if he can live comfortably. So if the question is, could I survive on $1,000 in San Juan del Sur? Would I starve to death? No, of course, you could live on 1000 That's way above minimum wage. People do it all the time. But 
comfortably? No. So as a starting point, $300 means that our budget that elsewhere in the country, if you're here in Leon or you're in Matagalpa, for example, and you're spending $150 a month, even $200 a month, that leaves you $800 to $850 to work with for all your other bills. But in San Juan do Sur, you'd automatically be down to like $700. That's significant when that's your total shopping envelope. Then things like water and electricity, they're probably going to be extremely close. You're not going to have wild variations. You might spend a few dollars more in San Juan. It's also possible you spend a few dollars less. So uh, you can kind of guess what the budget is for that based on other places. And if you're really on a tight budget, you're trying to be careful, you can probably get away with spending about $50 per month for those things. Your internet, which is probably going to be another $35 per month, those things won't really vary very much by being in San Juan del Sur. It's possible that you'll get slightly more expensive or maybe like with your internet, slightly less high quality service, but it's not gonna be dramatic. And, and if you're on that tight budget, those things probably won't matter. So that stuff, that's not where you're gonna find your big variation. Where you're gonna find your really big variations is in food and transportation. Let's start with transportation. If you're living in a place like Leon or Matagalpa, first of all, you can walk to nearly everything. Now, if you're in downtown San Juan del Sur, you're probably not paying $250 or $300 a month for a comfortable place. Probably going to pay a little bit more, but you can walk to everything. But there isn't as much to walk to, and the grocery store is not there. So you're very limited on some of that stuff, whereas here you can really walk to almost anything. I live out in the barrio, but if you live downtown, you really can walk to a lot of stuff. When you need to go most places, we have public transportation that is incredibly cheap. You can get around the city for less than a dollar. And if you need to take a taxi, it's just a few dollars to go basically anywhere in the city. It's very easy to get around. If you're in San Juan del Sur, going even shorter distances, passing very small areas could easily cost $20 in a taxi. And there aren't as many public transportation options if they even exist. That's just for getting around town. So you're going to be stuck walking a lot farther and getting to a lot fewer things. This may not be a big problem for you, but for most people, it's going to be a cost problem if you're on a tight budget. Again, if you're on a, a very large budget, you're not going to care. Oh, $20 for a taxi, you'll probably have a car, whatever, not a big deal. But if you're on that $1,000 a month, you're not going to be buying a car, you're a lot more limited. One taxi ride a month is going to be noticeable in your entire budget. So that's very important. Keep that in mind. But also, if you live in San Juan del Sur, you need to go into the cities, Rivas and Managua, a lot more often because San Juan del Sur has so little in the city. If you live here in Leon or up in Matagalpa, again, these are big cities that are basically self-sufficient. There are still times we recommend for most people to go into Managua to do some shopping, especially for groceries, appliances, and things like that. It is worth it, but it's also worth noting, one, our drive time, especially from here in Leon into the city, into Managua, is under two hours. So that's not a big deal. Even a taxi isn't that expensive. It's about the same price to get all the way to Managua as taking a couple trips around San Juan del Sur for the day just because they charge so much more down there. So that alone is quite different. But we have public transportation that goes into the city so quickly that you can go in and out of Managua via public buses for just a little over $2.00 basically any time that you want. So we have the ability to use Managua via public transportation for super cheap. And we're close enough that we can do it very easily. They don't have that high-speed shuttle uh, public bus coming out of San Juan del Sur. So if you're going to do something like that, it's only going to be one or two runs a day and it's going to cost more like $75. Uh, and if you're looking to do it on the public bus, it's going to take all day. You couldn't go in and out in a single day. As far as I know, you wouldn't have enough time to do all the, the chicken bus transfers. So that makes public transportation to all of the stuff that you do around San Juan del Sur, both more necessary and far more limited. That's going to make it very difficult. Now, if you have lots of free time, maybe you can make that work, but it's going to use a lot of effort on your part to help mitigate some of those things. But almost anyone, especially expats, are going to find that it's just going to be a lot more costly and a lot less comfortable to live in San Juan del Sur on that kind of budget. That is just the start. Now, that does impact your groceries. There's very little grocery shopping in San Juan del Sur. If you want to grocery shop in town, you're basically limited to the Maxi Pali, which is fine, but that means your selection is quite low. All the restaurants there are having things shipped in from specialty growers or from places in Managua or farms or whatever. They're doing a lot to bring in that food. If you're just going to the grocery, you're a lot more limited than you are in the other cities where we have La Union, we have La Colonia, we have the local markets. Now, of course, there is a local market as well. So you do have the local market and the Maxi Pali, but we also have multiple Maxi Pali's, the Pali's. We have so many options that it's reasonably close to grocery shopping in the U.S. when you're in the big cities. But in San Juan del Sur, it is not. So that may be a point of problems. And if you want to have any kind of variety, any kind of selection, and you really want to compete on price for a lot of things, you're stuck heading into Managua in most cases, Rivas for some cases. Uh, and that, again, it's going to be a lot more effort, a lot more time, and a lot more money to get to and from 
that's going to negate a lot of the, the cost, potential cost savings of trying to eat limited from the local grocery. But the big, big, big expense is going to be the restaurants. If you're going out to eat in most of the country, we can easily go out to eat on the street for just a few dollars, often like 2 to $3 you can get a meal. Uh, for me, I'm a vegetarian, so it's pretty difficult. But if you eat meat, there's so many options on the street. You really can do well for just a couple dollars. And a lot of Nicaraguans do it on a regular basis. So it's very, very viable at the Fritangas and the, the Asados and all that stuff. But if you want to be able to go out to restaurants, and if you're talking about living comfortably, generally you're going to want to go to restaurants once in a while. If we go through all that, we limit our, eliminate our budget and say, what do we actually have to work with after we're paying 250 for rent and uh, 35 for, for internet and 50 for, well, we're probably working with about $650 in an entire month is our total budget for going out to eat groceries, uh, shopping for clothes, shoes, all those things. If we made $750 or had $750 to spend on all those things per month, that's $25 per day for everything. So we're still very limited. But if we're at $650, we're way below that. We're more like $20 per day. We're getting quite limited on what we can do. If you're here in Leon and then we're assuming a single person and you want to go out to eat at a restaurant, it's relatively easy to go to a real restaurant. This is a sit down normal restaurant and eat for between eight and ten dollars. That's not too big of a deal at all. You can really make that happen. Now, if you're ordering out a pizza, that's going to cost more, but presumably it'll last you a few days. If you're getting a whole pizza, you can, in theory, invest in, and keep it in the fridge or whatever. Uh, but if you're going to normal restaurants or doing delivery, little things like the $1 delivery fee that we often don't think too much of. Well, if you're on $1,000 a month, you're doing that a few times a month. Yeah, it's not a huge part of your budget, but you start to notice. And if you're adding that into your food budget, you have to think about it. Otherwise, you have to travel to the restaurants. But what's average of an $8 to $10 meal here is going to be a $20 to $30 meal in San Juan del Sur. That's the difference between your $20 budget getting you two meals per day and saving a dollar or two towards whatever your other expenses are and not being able to go out to eat for those meals because you simply can't get the food for the day. You, you'll find somewhere that you can eat, but the comparable places will be that you can do it almost every day versus it would be a very special case thing because it uses so much of your budget. So everything in the food perspective is quite a bit more expensive in San Juan del Sur. The groceries are a little bit more expensive, but noticeably, but the restaurants are literally something like 300% the cost of restaurants here. And you would assume, I don't actually know this, but beer is probably you know, an extra 20 cents or more uh, per beer, which again, if you're just having a beer a month, you're not going to notice at all. But if you are having one or two beers per day, which is really common in the Nicaraguan lifestyle, then at the end of the month, that's going to be a part of your budget that, not crippling, but it'll show up. Just the additional cost of the beer, not the cost of the beer itself. So all those things. They, I think the the at the end of the day, the answer is, can you live comfortably at $1,000 per month in San Juan del Sur? I think the answer is no, you can't. Can you live? Yes. But could you classify it as comfortable? I think you'd be really struggling to do so. That's a, It's a stretch to try to, to maintain that that's possible. I'd be definitely interested in hearing of people who live in San Juan del Sur. Have you met anyone who is living as a comfortable expat in the $1,000 per month range? I'd be really surprised if anyone is, but it's not impossible. I definitely want to hear from people. Uh, if they are, are they living in the town? Are they living outside of the town? I know some people from the community have been there, but they live with roommates. And so their budget is, you know, they're like, well, I only pay $100 in rent or whatever. And it's because they're not in San Juan del Sur at all. They're actually in a different town in a different side of the mountain that's very far away, um, like a $30 taxi ride from San Juan del Sur. Uh, and they're only looking at half their expense. That's their room, not their house. Uh, and they're actually spending 200 or 300, whatever per month, but they have someone to split it with. Of course, two people on a $2,000 budget in San Juan del Sur would be a completely different discussion. If that's what you wanted to do, well, it would still be really, really tight. But if you were a couple and you both brought in $1,000 independently and you split your rent, well, your rent would not be over 300. So you could each pay 150 and suddenly that's more viable. And when you go out to eat and you cook and you do those, those things, you're splitting that rent and maybe only one person travels into Managua or Rivas to do that shopping, but they shop for both. So you're able to consolidate some of those prices. It would still be lean living, but $2,000, I think for two people in San Juan del Sur is at least plausible or viable, but a single person at a thousand, very, very difficult. 
So that's kind of that's kind of my impression there. When you're looking at San Juan del Sur, I know that everyone pushes you towards there. All the marketing pushes you there. There's lots of reasons that, um, especially North Americans, prefer San Juan del Sur. You're much more likely to get uh, American restaurants, American bars, American style things, and American style living. A lot of Americans and Canadians to hang out with. It's a different lifestyle than the rest of the country. So there are reasons that people look at it when they don't look at the rest of Nicaragua for sure. But if you're trying to find a way to live on an extreme budget and you want it to be comfortable, that's probably a combination of things that's just not going to go together in a reasonable way. It's Unfortunately, I can't answer where you could do that. If you were to change that one factor and say, if I want to live someplace like San Juan del Sur, then I have a $1,000 US budget per month. Where can I live comfortably? My answer is going to be, I honestly don't know. If you're okay without the American style living and you don't want to be either on the beach or in an enclave or around, the, well, all of Nicaragua is okay. Probably almost all of Honduras, almost all of El Salvador, almost all, well, a good portion of Guatemala, a little bit maybe of Belize, but that'll be tough. Some of those areas are going to have, and even in Panama, there's places where you could probably live at $1,000 per month and find it reasonably comfortable, much more so than San Juan del Sur, simply because they're closer to things. Their lifestyle is not designed around these super expensive restaurants. That's what makes San Juan del Sur tough is that all the things that people think of as San Juan del Sur, other than the beach, of course, and its proximity to the border, are all things that cost a lot of money. You want to take a taxi or do, you know, go to a show, go do things in San Juan del Sur? Well, most of the places that put on events or have concerts or whatever, they're relatively expensive restaurants and bars and or they are located pretty far outside of San Juan del Sur. It is a cultural thing in San Juan del Sur to refer to places that are extremely far away as also being San Juan del Sur. It's completely inaccurate. San Juan del Sur is the village and nothing else. It's not a region. It's not a departmento, nothing of the sort. But because it has a famous name, everyone wants to be associated with it. So people refer to living in San Juan del Sur when they live in places that are absolutely not. If you're here in Leon, which is a much bigger place, we're in the departmento of Leon. We're in the city of Leon. It's a huge city. It's a huge departmento. And when you go out to the beaches, when you're in areas that were relatively close, we rarely refer to it as being in Leon, even though technically we kind of are. If you go to Salinas Grande, so you go to El Transido, they would never refer to themselves as being in Leon. But at that same distance and a much longer travel time, somewhere in the South Rivas zone, people will refer to themselves as living and, and doing things in San Juan del Sur. And they're not even close to it. They're not even remotely related to being in San Juan del Sur. And so that can be very misleading. You look at events and say, oh, I want to go to this restaurant. I want to go to this concert. I want to go hang out with these friends at their house. And then you find out it may be a $50 taxi ride away and an hour or two in that taxi. Like that's a really big deal. And there may be no public transportation going there because it's just little enclaves or people's houses on dirt roads on the sides of a hill. You may have to have a four by four. Your taxi may not even be able to get there. I've had that experience where the taxi struggled to get me to a rental house and they didn't warn anyone. They just acted like it was in San Juan del Sur. It wasn't in that village. It was not in the same location at all. And it was not really accessible. And the cost to get to and from was crazy. And you couldn't go to restaurants. You couldn't order food because it wasn't in the place that they said. That's also a big deal. All those services that you assume you're going to get, all those benefits you assume you're going to get in San Juan del Sur. Well, the variety of restaurants, the ability to order things, the delivery, all that. If you're not careful, you end up with not being there. Um, and so you could be like, oh, I don't get any of those things because the house I rented is actually 10 miles outside of town, which if you own a car, not a huge deal. In the United States, you like 10 miles. That's still kind of in town. But in Nicaragua, you're in another completely different region altogether. So a lot of the things that you imagine or you would want to do for the uh, San Juan del Sur lifestyle may be absolutely price inaccessible to someone on a thousand dollar budget. You could do it once, but that's like it every several months. You could do one time afford to go to some of these places. This is just so expensive to get there. You'd spend your entire day walking or riding a bike or getting someone to take you in the back of a pickup and you start making the, can I live comfortably argument? Not really viable. Yep. You can pull it off, but comfortable. It is probably not. So my recommendation is if you really want to be in San Juan del Sur, if it really is just the location you absolutely want to be in just Accept that your thousand dollars is not going to get you to a point of comfort. And if your goal is to live comfortably and you're willing to uh, compromise on San Juan del Sur being the location and you're more willing to look at Nicaragua in general, then I think you have a lot of options. You have a lot of wonderful options. You could be anywhere from Managua, maybe Granada. Granada could be a little bit tough. Ometepe probably is okay. Uh, Matagalpa, Esteli, Hinotega. 
Chinandega, Leon, Hinotepe, San Marcos, Didiamba, uh, you name it, there are cities everywhere, even Rivas itself, you can probably pull off on that budget and live in really nice, very safe regions, safer than San Juan del Sur areas, with a good variety of restaurants, good access to public transportation, uh, good lifestyles, and in many cases, better weather, but it's not going to be that enclave style, very American tourist kind of uh, living. So it's an extremely different experience. So depending on how you are visioning what that future is that you want will really affect where uh, you want to spend that thousand dollars. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel and the work that we do here, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That goes directly to a page. Let's you buy me a couple coffees and it comes directly to me and helps me pay for doing this show and all the costs that we incur because we're still not actually covering our costs, but we're getting really close and really appreciate everyone helping to support the channel. And if you could, uh, you know, watch an extra episode after this one that tells the algorithm that the show matters to you, share this on social media, tell someone about the show and I'll see all of you tomorrow. And if it works, I'm going to pop up four videos on the screen just click on one of those and that will satisfy the algorithm and it won't hunt you down in your sleep.